My name is Chantal Lau, and I'm a clinical researcher who has been studying the development of infant oral feeding for the last 20 years. I have developed a series of educational modules for the Infant Health Foundation to provide practitioners with the latest evidence-based research relating to infant oral feeding. This first module that I call the Fundamentals of Infant Oral Feeding Skills presents our current knowledge on the normal development of these skills. On each slide, where appropriate, I have listed the references. On our website, you will find a list of all the references quoted in each module. So to properly understand the development of oral feeding skills, one must first look at the development of three functions, namely sucking, swallowing, respiration, as well as their coordinated activities. Also, when looking at sucking, we need to differentiate between nutritive and non-nutritive sucking. Nutritive sucking implicates the ingestion of liquid, whereas non-nutritive does not. Non-nutritive sucking corresponds, for instance, to sucking on a pacifier or a thumb. With non-nutritive sucking, the only liquid that babies may swallow is their own saliva. The slide shows what a mature nutritive sucking pattern looks like. It includes two components, suction and expression. The suction component consists of the generation of a negative intraoral pressure to draw milk into the mouth. This is similar to what we do when drinking with a straw. It is the negative pressure or vacuum inside our mouth that pulls the liquid up the straw. The expression component consists of the compression or stripping of the nipple, bottle, or breast by the tongue to eject milk into the mouth. I like to use the analogy of milking a cow by hand as it used to be done in the old days. The recording below shows the mature nutritive sucking pattern of a term infant. The top channel corresponds to the negative pressures generated with suction and the bottom channel, the positive pressure gen generated by the compression or stripping of the nipple by the tongue against the heart palate in order to eject the milk out into the mouth. Note the rhythmicity of these events as the baby alternates between suction and expression. Also, please note that the frequency of suction expression, as shown by the time scale in the middle of the figure, is about one suck per second. This is the average frequency for nutritive sucking. Non-nutritive sucking is about two sucks per second. I will show you later how similar nutritive and non-nutritive sucking patterns are, although we have to remember that they develop at different time in the baby's maturation. This slide shows the gradual maturation of nutritive sucking as an infant transitions from tube to independent oral feeding. This is a descriptive scale I developed to identify how well a baby feeds by mouth based on his or her sucking stage. Stage one is the most immature and stage five the most mature, the one seen in term babies. As maturation advances, stages one to three are divided into A and B to show that sucking can consist of the expression component alone, as shown in 1A, 2A, and 3A, or of both suction and expression as seen in 1b, 2b, and 3b. In addition to the sequential appearance of expression and suction, sucking maturation is also characterized by rhythm, as I showed you on the previous slide. However, you will see that rhythmicity of expression appears around stage 2a, while that of suction appears at a later time around stage 3b. You can also see that although stage four shows the alternation of suction and expression, it does not have the smooth rhythmicity that we see at stage five, the one that most term babies use. So we can summarize that immature sucking is characterized by expression alone, whereas the mature pattern is characterized by the rhythmic alternation of suction and expression. I am using this slide to show you how non-nutritive sucking on a pacifier, for instance, matures before nutritive sucking. 
Although both infants show mature non-nutritive tracings, the top half of, the, of both uh, pictures, stage five, the baby on the left was a younger preterm than the one on the right. And as you see, he is feeding using an immature nutritive sac, a stage two, as compared to the baby on the right who is using a term-like sucking pattern, stage five. The message that I want to uh, to give from this is that we should not presume that if a non-nutritive suck is mature, that a baby is ready for oral feeding. This slide shows the swallowing process. There are five phases in swallowing. A, the oral phase, relates to the formation of the bolus prior to the initiation of the swallowing reflex. The times in parentheses are to give you an idea of the duration of the individual phases as seen in normal healthy babies. B is the start of the pharyngeal phase and relates to the propulsion of the bolus into the back of the pharyngeal wall, the little red dot that you see on the picture, in order to initiate the swallowing reflex. Once the reflex is initiated, it cannot be stopped. C is the pharyngeal phase. It relates to the transport of the bolus to the upper esophageal sphincter, or UES, which is the opening of the esophagus. D is the start of the esophageal phase and corresponds to the opening of the UES for the proper passage of the bolus into the esophagus. E, the esophageal phase, corresponds to the bolus transport down the esophagus. We are now talking about esophageal motility or peristalsis, which moves the bolus down to the stomach. This needs to be followed by the timely opening of the lower esophageal sphincter, or LES, for bolus entry into the stomach. You can now imagine how any desynchronization of these five phases can lead to feeding problems. We will talk more about this in a later module. We will now talk about the maturation of the swallowing process. This process becomes more adaptable. By this, I mean that the bolus is formed more rapidly. There is an increase in the intrabolus pressure. This is the force generated by the tongue pushing the bolus back towards the posterior wall of the pharynx in order to initiate the swallowing reflex. The baby can handle larger and varying bolus sizes. It can also increase its swallowing rate. The synchronization of the upper esophageal sphincter, esophageal motility, and lower esophageal sphincter is improved. So taking all the other above events together, the swallowing process occurs more rapidly. It becomes a swifter event. As respiration matures, there will be a decrease in oxygen requirement, which in turn would lead to decreased episodes of oxygen desaturation and or apneic episodes. At rest, infants breathe about 40 to 60 breaths per minute or 1.5 to 1 cycle per second. Swallows can last between 0.35 to 0.7 seconds. With swallows interrupting airflow, a baby may not have sufficient time for appropriate oxygen carbon dioxide exchange if he has to feed for too long, as this would increase uh, his risk of oxygen desaturation, choking, and or aspiration into the lungs. I want to use this slide to stress the importance of the coordination of sucking, swallowing, and respiration. You remember earlier how I mentioned that non-nutritive sucking matures earlier than nutritive sucking. This is likely due to the fact that it does not involve swallowing or minimally just the baby's saliva. As such, sucking and respiration can work independently from each other. However, when swallowing comes into play as it does during nutritive sucking, these three functions must be coordinated in such a manner as to minimize the risk of liquid penetrating into the lungs when the baby is breathing. As such, sucking, swallowing, and respiration 
become dependent upon each other. It is difficult for us to know what level of coordination is deemed safe or unsafe for oral feeding. However, research studies over the last few years have begun to shed some light on the interaction between sucking and swallowing and between swallowing and respiration. I will discuss this in more detail in a later module. So in summary, I have presented in this first module what I call the fundamentals of infant oral feeding, namely the normal development or maturation of oral feeding skills, sucking, whether it's nutritive or non-nutritive, swallowing, respiration, and the importance of the coordination of these three functions.